there my creative friends this is sarah simpson i am a mixed media artist avid sketchbooker and someone who really likes to draw and this week i'm back with a new video uh, today's topic is an introduction to copic markers um, i am here today with five tips uh, for getting started, the basics, the things I wish I had known when I had started my alcohol uh, marker journey. Um, I do reference Copix a lot because um, that is the brand that I use the most and have um, invested in. But if you use other alcohol markers, you'll definitely pick up some great tips from this video. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So my first tip and one of the things I struggled with most um, when I first started with Copic markers is getting an even fill. Um, and one of the most important things um, is to make sure that your marker is nice and juicy because if you have a dried out marker, you're not going to get an even fill. Um, and actually my marker here was a little bit dry so um, I had to fill mine so I decided to go ahead and record it um, and there's a few different ways you can fill your markers but the way I like to do it is I actually um, just grab a piece of tissue and pull the um, the, the chisel nib off and um, fill in the marker that way um, I think it's the fastest way to do it um, you can also just kind of drip it on to the end of the marker but um, I don't have the patience for that. So um, the next key to um, getting an even fill, in my opinion, is to use tiny circles. I literally, when I'm coloring in, um, just use tiny little circles. As I draw, um, trying to keep along the wet edge, I kind of zigzag back and forth, um, moving in tiny little circles. I just think it tends to work best so that you don't have the, any hard edges. Um, if you do notice some hard edges as you're coloring, you can kind of scrub back in with your marker. Um, so yes, um, tiny circles. Another thing that's really helpful to getting an even flow and to getting that ink really flowing out of the marker is to make sure you're angl angling the marker. So you're not using like the tip, the point of your marker. You're not holding it um, up vertically. You're holding it at an angle. And one way to um, make this easier is you may notice that I'm not holding the marker right close to the tip. Um, I'm holding it almost in the middle of the marker and that helps me um, get a better flow of the ink because you're getting more surface area of the marker onto the paper so um, i think that is really helpful um, way to really get that ink flowing so another thing that you'll see me doing here is i'm finishing this first coat of color is i'm um, flicking some color over the top and what do i mean by flicking the color over I mean you're kind of um, you're applying the most pressure at first and then you're easing off and that allows you to get more color um, at the, the, the start of your stroke and then kind of fade out at the end and that's a good way to kind of fill in some patchy areas And then my last tip for getting that even fill is just that you might have to do multiple coats. Um, if you have a nice light color, you might be able to get away with a single coat. Um, but the darker the color, typically the more coats you're going to need to get an even fill. Um, this was a mid-range color, so I did find that um, a second coat really did give um, a much more even appearance. So the next uh, topic I wanted to cover was making gradients with uh, alcohol markers. That's one of the great things about alcohol markers is those great blends you can get. And um, for those of us that, or those of you I suppose, that also have Copic markers, I did want to briefly discuss the Copic marker coloring system. Um, one of the reasons why I like Copic markers is because once you have a basic understanding of the coloring system, it gives you a great indication of what um, colors are going to blend well together. Um, so um, I'm just going to briefly go over this. So here I'm showing you the 
pale blue marker um, B32 and um, so the letter represents the color family so like blue and um, the first number the three here represents the amount of gray that is in your marker so the higher this number the more gray or more muted that color will be and then the last number um, the, the two represents the value of the color so um, the higher number the higher the number the darker the color um, and you don't necessarily have to remember all that but what is really helpful is just to remember that that last number, the value, um, it will be helpful to pick, uh, pick markers that contain similar values. So even if you're using like a green and a blue or an orange and a blue or whatever colors, if you pick numbers that are very close to each other um, for that third number, it is going to help make that blend easier. I hope that makes sense. So um, there's a couple of different ways that I find myself making gradients with markers. And one of those ways is to start with my dark color first. And I'll actually color in a little bit past where I want that color to end. And then I go in with my lighter color. Um, I actually started from the opposite edge and colored into the blue color. And then you'll have to go back and forth a little bit with your um, colors to get that nice blend. Um, remember, the more ink you have on the paper, it tends to um, blend nicer. So just go back and forth with those colors until you get a blend that looks nice. Another method that I use a lot is to uh, color in the area with my lighter color first and then flick in my darker color. And you do use more ink this way, um, but I like this method. I actually think I get tend to get a better blend this way um, because once you already have a layer of ink on the paper, it makes um, blending in other colors a lot easier. Um, so yes, I do like uh, filling in with light and then flicking in dark. And just like with um, the first gradient, you can go back and forth with your colors until you get um, a nice blend. And last of all, I thought I would show you that you can use these same um, principles to with multiple colors to make a gradient with, uh, for example, three colors. Um, following, if you're using Copics, um, again, using those um, Copic co color codes that are similar to each other. Um, so I'm progressing from a one to a three to a four to make a nice three color um, gradient blend. And just like before, go back and forth with your colors until you get a, a blend that you're happy with. My third tip is really helpful if you're just starting out and you have a small budget. Um, you don't need every color out there because you can mix your own colors. So if you know just um, basic color theory, um, red and blue make purple, um, yellow and blue make green, that kind of thing, um, you can mix your own colors. Um, one of my favorite colors to make uh, is purple. Uh, the I find that kind of the rose colors and the teal colors make a um, really pretty purple. So um, just sit down and make some swatches and see what color blends you can or what color combos um, you can make. You can kind of go back and forth to um, you know tip the color one direction or the other. Um, it's just an ex it's a fun relaxing thing to just sit down and even do in front of the TV. So um, make some swatches and try um, combining your colors to see what colors um, you can make because you you might find or you will find that you will actually really expand um, the colors that you have just from the markers you already own. And you can do this with multiple brands. You don't have to just use Copic. So um, use them together. It'll work. Try it out. So my fourth uh, tip for getting started with Copic markers is um, how to use the colorless blender. And um, 
actually, I'm going to go ahead and just say you don't need it. Uh, if you're on a um, small budget, um, skip the colorless blender. Um, you definitely don't need it for blending. It is a very poorly named tool. Um, I would actually call it more of a an eraser or a lightener. Um, the way that I you find myself using it most is to like clean up the edges where I might have um, colored over a line a little bit. Um, you can use the colorless blender to kind of clean that up, maybe let it dry, go back over it a few times and you can clean up that edge. Or um, another way to use it is to maybe uh, if you're trying to lighten a spot or make a highlight, you can um, go over the color to lighten the area or um, I've even used it before to play around with um, making like stripes in uh, stripe designs or patterns. So um, yeah, that's how you use a colorless blender. I would actually call it more of a lightener and um, yeah, you don't necessarily need it. You definitely don't need it for blending. And my fifth and final tip for this video is to test your pens, test any inks that you're going to use with your Copic markers um, or alcohol markers um, because alcohol markers um, tend to make a lot of pens bleed or smudge. So um, you want to lean towards a waterproof ink and um, it's always a good idea to just um, make a couple lines and go over it with like a yellow. I feel like yellow is the most notorious for ma making um, colors bleed or light skin tone color. So go with a light color. You might not notice it with a dark color and uh, make sure it's not going to bleed. If you find that uh, your pen does bleed and you still really want to use it with your Copic markers, just um, color first and ink second. And then just a little bonus here, here are my uh, favorite pens to use with Copic markers. I am someone that prefers to ink first if possible and um, I find that these ones work well. Um, from the the left is my um, Tombow Food and Sake. Um, it's a nice felt tip pen. Um, it's a little stiffer, so you have a little more control over lines. I tend to use this more for detailing. Um, my favorite favorite is my T Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, and it has um, it actually has like bristles on it like a paintbrush and um, it's a little harder to control you definitely um, get some thick thick lines with this but um, I love it I like the way it looks and then another one that I've been using more recently is my um, Kiritake and I fill that with um, Sumi ink and um, it works really great with markers it dries really fast um, the only thing I find with this is sometimes the um, the bristles get a little dry and if I just tip them just put in a little bit of water um, then I can get it flowing nicely again and um, it has those bristles like the, the like the Pentel brush pen and then um, also a solid choice um, for a technical pen is always the Copic multi liners If you're still here, hopefully that means you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, or at least you found it to be acceptable background noise. Um, if you would like to see what I'm up to on a daily basis, or at least every other day, you can also follow me on Instagram um, at by Sarah Simpson. I would love it if you would subscribe, become part of my YouTube family, hit that notification bell. We've got a few friends around here. And I just want you to know that I'm happy to have you uh, hanging around my channel, um, arting it up. So until next time, keep on arting in the real world. Bye.